I hear all the recent chatter about Canadian values, I think of the line, I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. First things first, of course there are Canadian values. Curiously, there wouldn't be any value to being Canadian if Canadians didn't have values. But saying there are Canadian values does not mean there's a definitive list. Some are permanent, like military valor, love of the land. Some come into being with new times, expanded notions of tolerance. And some are even light and jokey, reflecting a casual patriotism, the Maple Leafs, craft dinner. At some moments, Canadian values shine with undeniable brilliance and clarity. Take that sad day in October two years past when a misfit killed Corporal Cirillo, when the Sergeant of Arms acted the hero on Parliament Hill, and when that fine woman Barbara Winters sat by the dying Corporal telling him he was loved. Now there was a moment those three gave us a tableau of what all Canadians in their hearts and minds would wish to see as the Canadian character, our values being enacted in moments of mercy and courage. Go back to the Canadian response to 9-11 and that glorious exfoliation of hospitality and neighborliness in central Newfoundland, where the people took into their homes and hearts all those stranded and anguished Americans. If pride can beam, it beamed then. All Canadians celebrated that some of our citizens were acting as all would wish to act in a like circumstance. We saw the same in the Calgary floods and even more heroically in the fires that roared through Fort McMurray this summer when a wagon train of pickups lined the highway during the exodus and firefighters performed an Olympics of courage and stamina. I can recall too the beautiful moments of the farewell to Pierre Trudeau. Even those who had no political sympathy for Trudeau saw in his superb personal qualities, his intelligence and nerve, a rare ideal paralleled during the passing of another in the same mold, that great sage Peter Lougheed. The enduring affection for Terry Fox, that super special ordinary Canadian who cut a space into every Canadian heart for his endurance and selflessness is another window in what Canadians value. And in a different zone, Wayne Gretzky, a superstar that never played the celebrity king, whose character quiet in a Canadian way matched his sovereign athletic genius. Now there are whole fields I'm ignoring here and cold tracks of history. But in these people we choose to admire, we produce a sketch of what ideally we would like to see in ourselves. We project national character as an ideal drawn from the examples of exceptional citizens. And the frame of that picture <coughs> is the country, the landscape itself. So yes, Virginia. There are Canadian values, and they are the elements that bind us as one people. That however elusive and resistant to precise definition, they are projected with unutterable clarity in moments of high achievement and unforgiving challenge. I'm not sure what Canadians' values are, but I know them when I see them. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy. Canadians are perhaps the only people on earth who say sorry who preemptively apologize when they themselves are not at fault, but when someone else has done some accidental little hurt to them. Canadians are also the only ones who, in the face of a real apology to them, wave it off with no problem. No problem dissolves all thought of offense. These are great habits. Tiny gestures of good manners, both. They are the very oil we put on the friction of trivial social encounter. We wouldn't need to be worried about civility, if the practice of good manners were broader, deeper, and the first response to any troubling or trying situations. Now we all have nasty moments, moments of anger too, and moments when we allow ourselves to just let fly. But having been schooled by parents and by ourselves, we know that to scream or insult or abuse or deliberately embarrass someone, stranger or not, is mean and self-indulgent. The best among us hold back, control those little fits, of loud or insulting behavior. On Elizabeth May's speech, there's not really much to say. It was emphatically not an attempt at humor. It was a disorganized stream, mainly of anger and insult, revolving around Ms. May's unfortunate deep contempt for Prime Minister Harper. When we talk, as we do so often, about civility in public discourse, we could remind ourselves that a code of manners centered in every individual and held on as an anchor
hacker in the social media cell phone age would modify so much that is harsh, juvenile, abusive, and demeaning in our public exchanges, and for that matter, in our private lives. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy. This country's celebrity politician has the people's attention whenever he wants it. Two things. Canada is not Stephen Harper's Tamal. Canada is bigger, stronger, and deeper than Stephen Harper. And here's a shock. It's bigger and stronger than Justin Trudeau as well. Bigger than all the politicians. Secondly, and perhaps more to the point for the camera caressing Justin, Canada is not your mirror. It's not meant to match the face looking into it. If, as you say, you do, you look at Canada and you do not see yourself in the values reflected there, then maybe the fault is not the mirror, but in the hand that's holding it. It is pure hubris to believe your values are the litmus of everyone else's nationhood. Finally, no one's accusing Justin Trudeau in his first or third person of being a separatist, except, well, carelessly, Justin Trudeau himself. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy. The reason I'm here is that I'm celebrating the 25th anniversary of Newfoundland and Confederation. And the reason I did that is that I'm tired of Screech, Joey Smallwood, Pretty Scenery, and How Are You By being about the most that most people know of what this province is like. 